Y'all better hold on tight for this episode of the Walk With Jesus podcast. What was supposed to be a one-hour podcast episode turned into two hours of live spiritual warfare that was absolutely necessary for both myself and my guest to handle together. I am recording this intro a week and a half after the episode because I needed time to process what happened. Spoiler alert, Jesus wins. (laughs) But in the meantime, I'm going to start this with a prayer over you, the listener, because as we talk about demonic forces that need to leave our lives, leave our towns, and leave our countries, you can sense things getting stirred up even around you as our words are processed. And so to begin that, before we go in, we're just going to cover ourselves with the grace of God. So join me in this prayer. (sighs) Dear God, I just thank you so much for the listener on the other end of my words. You know exactly what has led them to this point, where their curiosity is, where their relationship is with you. And I ask that right now you place a bubble of your peace and your protection around every single person that can hear these words. God, you just fill them with blessing, with your love, and with this understanding that through Jesus, we have already overcome the world because our Savior has. Thank you, God for the authority you have given us and the grace you have helped me and our listeners to understand. In Jesus' name, amen. Without further ado, let me welcome you to this episode with Phoenix, a special two-part episode where we battle (laughs) live spiritual forces and then welcome in God's angels afterwards. And it sounds crazy, and yet it is fully biblically founded. Oh, hold on tight, and here we go. Phoenix, welcome to the Walk With Jesus podcast. It's really, really good to see you again. And just to give our listeners and viewers some background, um, we, well, we both met each other off of TikTok. And uh, when I first saw your content, I was, I think everyone is, because I get this comment too, people are like suspicious. They're like, hmm, is this the real deal? And then some of your stories, I was like, I have lived through the same things, your approach to to Jesus and spiritual warfare and always bringing it back um, well to the power of Jesus. And then the tests and anyway, there was so much, I was like, oh, this guy's the real deal. Uh, and getting to talk to you was fantastic. And then you also helped me with a, with a deliverance session, which is so funny because I don't know, I, I, I'm okay that I needed it, but I imagine people are like, really? Dakota needed that. Um, and yet it was it was amazing. Plus, you are in Bali right now, which is so interesting on the eastern side of the world. I am like really excited to dive into these topics. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing amazing. I'm super excited to be here tonight. So this is amazing. Or tonight for me, this morning. I know, I was just thinking, I'm like, Psh. I just had to get out of bed for this. This is early for yeah. me because of this time difference. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm glad we can make it work though, so. Yes, me too. Okay, so first thing, I wanted to update you on how I was feeling after um, the the deliverance that you did with me. Thank you again. And, um, you know, <laughs> in, in some ways, I was really... I know you said a lot of people feel lighter after uh, after a, a session like that, but I, I felt heavier, but it wasn't bad. Yeah. It was kind of like, oh, I'm really going to rest now. Yeah. yeah, it was it was more than that, though. And over the next couple of days, because we talked on a Friday, that whole weekend, I still felt like a just, I don't know, it was like a buzz, but it kind of made me, I just wanted to settle down, just be like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. And then God promised that he was going to sharpen my spiritual sight. Oh boy, has that happened. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. The things that I've been getting, it's just, it's just like I've gone into, um, I don't know. There's just periods where I go into like, oh, I'm getting tons of, of visions and interactions with God. And I really think that, that our talk together spurred that off from happening. It's like I took a weekend to just chill and then the week following, weekdays following, I was like, whoa, I'm getting so much content from God. I can't even record it all. Wow. So it's been pretty great. That's amazing. Yeah, I love to hear that. You know, and that is fairly common. I get that a lot because spiritual warfare is it's very draining. 
And I've learned, especially going through and getting rid of a lot of spirits and stuff like it, it really takes a toll almost because I think it's, I don't fully understand why, but yeah. it's like, a, it, I don't know if it's like it drains you somehow, or it's like, it's like learning to live without all these other spirits or something or something. I think it's almost like we need something to fill us. You know, and I think that's why if you're not filling yourself with the Holy Spirit, then and so it's like even once you get rid of all those spirits, you didn't even realize like people don't realize how much they're relying off of these other entities. You're right. So then it's almost like you have to fill it with the Holy Spirit. You know, even the story in the Bible where Jesus tells, you know, when he casts out a demon and he says how when you cast it out, it goes and wanders dry places. And then when it can't find a place to rest, it comes back to its house. When you see the sweat to put it into order, it's going to go grab seven of its friends that are seven times stronger than itself and come back and try to take the house back. Yes. And so with that, I think, you know, even like that, if it's all swept and put into order, I've learned that if you're filling yourself with the Holy Spirit, then there's nothing, there's no more room for it, you know, where it's like they can't come back. But so I think a lot of times, most of the time with people, when you get rid of it, you're exhausted like that because it's like you're empty almost, you know, like spiritually, you're like empty. You're like an empty vessel where it's like, mm -hmm. then you have to fill it with the right stuff that time and stuff like that, which you did, you know, but sometimes it takes, it takes a while still to boot back up after that kind of, you know. Yes. So you help primarily Christians. I can't even imagine you doing a deliverance session with someone that's not a Christian. It'd almost be dangerous because like of how much they could come back. Is that right? Yes. I, I only, I tell people, I only do it if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your savior, you know, because I've, I have had people try, I've had Hindus come to me um, yeah. for deliverance and, but the way they were phrasing things and stuff made it me believe that they were a born again Christian, but then it, they kept coming back. Right. Like I was casting out the spirits and stuff and they kept coming right back and I could not understand. And then God was telling me, well, they need to stop praying to these other gods. And I was like, so then I was like, okay, this is kind of, I was talking to them and I was like, okay, so this is kind of awkward, but like, do you still pray to other gods, the Hindu gods? And they're like, oh yeah. They're like, we pray to all the gods, including Jesus and God. And I was like, okay, well, and then I had to explain to them like salvation and why God tells us only to worship him and all this stuff. And so I make it very, because like, even when I do deliverances on people, with my gift to see the spirit realm, it makes it very easy for me to see like exactly what spirits are there what their names are, like what they're attached to and stuff and easy to get rid of them. Yeah. But like with that, I think I'm not doing anything. I'm not getting rid of them. It's Jesus that's getting rid of them, you know? And so, yeah, I only do it on Christians um, because other than that, a lot of times I've learned from experience as well, casting it out of people that aren't saved or Christians, it just makes it worse because it's like you're kicking them out of the house and then they're like, hey, um, what did you just do? Like, I have every right to be here. And then they're going to come back in and then they're going to be worse and affect the person worse just to spite you for yep. kicking them out. Yep. And so then I've learned it just makes situations worse if they haven't accepted you as your savior. So that's, that's why right. I do. I only do it for Christians because, mm -hmm. and you know, it's ironic because it's like you were talking about like, <laughs> like, oh, like Dakota can't have <laughs> demons and stuff, you know, when it's like I've yet to meet someone that doesn't have demons attached to them. And I used to be, think the same thing. I used to think like, oh. Christians can't have demons. That's ridiculous. Like that's mm -hmm. impossible. Mm -hmm. But I think part of that is too, is uh, with like, you know, horror movies and stuff. Yes. Where I think that's just like propaganda straight from Satan. But we kind of have this conception like, oh, if my head's not spinning around and I'm getting demonic visions and doors are slamming in my house, then I'm, I don't have demons. When no, like that's just like the very most extreme end of like <laughs> demonic oppression. But mm -hmm. most of demonic oppression as you saw now it's like most of the time it's like your mind it's like thoughts it's negative thoughts and like negative thought patterns and stuff that you don't even realize aren't your own thoughts and yes. stuff like that yeah. what was so fascinating to go through that session with you was um there are the the generational ones that we kind of addressed first or at least more near the beginning and yeah. when you were listing out their names and what they did it was like oh i've kind of seen that in my family and they were a little bit generalized and then they were gone. And then we switched to ones that were more apparently attached to me. And it was like, as you started calling out their names, I'm like, hold, hold on. This is very personal <laughs> because yeah. every single one related to this, this trend that I had seen in my life. And I want to give everybody examples like, um, oh, there were, oh my goodness. There were so many, there was one that, um, 
oh, there was a, there was a series of these demons that were attached to traumatic events in my life. And mm -hmm. there was like this friendship betrayal that you had, you didn't know that I had this 17 year old, very yeah. close friend. And I really did feel like she stabbed me in the back at 17. And you're like, yeah, you need to forgive her. And I'm like, <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> yeah. And oh, yeah. there was someone, ah, uh, grandmother. There was a grandmother on one side that there's been like a lot of family drama with. And you're like, yeah, you need to forgive her. I'm like, you're just, you're just saying forgive her. Like I, like yeah. <laughs> part of me wanted to be like, you have no idea what you're asking. And then I'm like, yeah. but I really do want to be free. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, yeah. and you're like, great, it's gone. And over here, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I just forgave this woman. Oh my goodness. Um, anyway, it's it, but it was so, so helpful. And the stuff that you had nailed, it was so personal, but it really related to things that had, had truly been going on in my life and my family. Um, there was one that was like, uh, uh, some, uh, some demon that had been trying to affect how I saw my own hair. And I was like, yeah. There have been times. <laughs> um, but anyway, it was just a really fascinating experience. And I'm just so grateful. Um, and, and so I, I guess what I'm curious about is like speaking more on how do, mm, how do Christians get, get demonic attachments like this? Cause I was, I'm seeking God as hard, as hard as I can, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and it's also partially what, well, no, it is what led me to you to help to get rid of all that. But like, how do, how do people who are following Christ with everything they've got end up with demonic stuff on them? Yeah. And you know, that's a great question. And so the way I describe it is kind of like, a you, when you sin, you give acts, that's giving them and like access into your life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and we're even Christians like me and you and stuff, like even other people like pastors and all these other people, like that are like you would think of as like devoted Christians, like they live their life for God and everything, you know, like ministry is their life. They still sin because they're still human, you know, and that's ultimately what lets these demons in. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's like everything that you were just talking about. It's like a lot of times these things are attached to sins that you don't even think of as sins where you're like, we go through them and you're like, oh, you're like, yeah, I, I do deal with that. Or, oh, I just thought that was like my personality or, oh, I just... I never even thought of that as a sin to ask God to forgive me of or anything, you know? And that's what I've learned is like the spirit realm is so legalistic. I always describe them like on my TikToks and stuff like this, evil lawyers, where it's like these spirits are like that spirit of like uh, hating your hair or being hate, hating how your hair looks or something, you know? That spirit specifically, as stupid as it sounds, that spirit specifically one time, when you were having negative thoughts about your hair, when you were doing it or something, that spirit happened to be around in the area, picked up on that energy of that specific hatred for your hair, because that's the energy it feeds off of, came in at that moment, fed you more thoughts to feed that, and you gave into those thoughts, and that's what gave it legal access into your life. So now it sees that, oh, you gave into my sin or my legal, so now I have a legal right into your, your, into your life like that, you know? Okay. Um, that, another me... way. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say another a metaphor I usually use for it is like if you imagine yourself and your life is like a house, right? Yeah. And so it's like any time that you have a sinful thought or you engage in a sin, that's like opening up a door or a window inside your house. And so, you know, just like with a real house in real life, you know, just because you leave a door or window open, that doesn't guarantee that like a thief or a snake or a wild dog or something is going to come in your house, but it leaves a possibility. So same thing spiritually, you know, not every time that you sin or have a sinful thought is there always like a demon behind it but a lot of times there is and so what i've learned is like with all this stuff christians and stuff like you can get rid of them you don't have to rebuke them by name or anything and stuff you know just by repenting of the specific sins you can get rid of them mm -hmm. you know and so that's why i describe like when you ask god to forgive you of all of your sins that you've ever done that's like closing all the doors and windows that you've ever opened up but if something already came in through one of those doors and windows, it's not going to leave until you kick it out or until you specifically call it out. So okay. like that spirit, you know, even though you've asked God, to, you've obviously like you've asked God to forgive you of your sins and you've accepted him as your savior and all this stuff. Like you're saved eternally and stuff, you know, like it doesn't affect salvation at all. It just affects your life here on earth. <laughs> and so now that spirit it sees like, well, this spirit goes before God and it's like, well, technically she never Dakota never asked you to forgive her for hating her hair. You know, so I still have a legal right to be here. <laughs> and then that, and then God is like, OK, well, in the courts of heaven, he's like, well, technically, you're right. So 
That's why I think there's so many verses where God tells us, you know, we need to confess all of our sins to God and we need to repent of and ask for forgiveness for each and every one of our sins. Because, you know, with that, he's saying like, hey, and he tells us too. he, like, he says, like, you know, we've are we you're already forgiven before you've even asked and stuff, you know, but it's like when he just tells us you need to confess and address each sin, because when you do that, he's like, hey, just address the sin so that then the spirit has no legal right to be in your life. So then if you were to pray and you're like, okay, God, please forgive me for having negative thoughts about my hair or hating my hair that you created for me to have, yeah, you know, then that's like, then that closes any door or window that that sin specifically opened up. And if there is a spirit attached to it, now it has to leave because now it no longer has a legal right because you've accepted Jesus' gift of salvation. You accepted that he died on the cross for your sins so that you don't have to pay the price for your sins. So when you ex address each specific sin like that, it gets rid of it like that, you know? And so I think that's why a lot of people, Christians don't really understand the true spiritual like significance of like repentance and like confessing your sins, even like that, where it's kind of been misconstrued in a lot of our churches and stuff today, where it's like, oh, like, oh, you need to repent. You're going to hell if you don't repent. Like, you know, where it's like, mm -hmm. no, like you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, you're saved. You just need to like address the address, close the doors that you've opened it up in your life really yes you know you know one um one interesting problem i think i think you're going to understand this because in the work that i do with clients i'm i'm a, a life coach but it's like about getting people connected with the holy spirit so there's some deliverance with it and going yeah. through the session with you was really helpful and who i've already used used some of the techniques that you had done with some of my clients and seen really cool results but but right. even that aside after that session with you of being like totally free i'm like this is fantastic how do I keep this? Um, and and then, you know, you've given me like a, a prayer to recite, which truly reads like a legal document. It takes like five minutes yeah. to say it out loud. And you're you're telling me, um, you know, you say it every night. It has protected you spiritually. And I've seen that in prayers as well. The first night after this call, I was like, OK, so I read it. I read it out and and um, I was fine. But my poor dog that night had a horrible, horrible, mm -hmm. horribly sick around 3 a.m. Uh, which is often, I hear that's a very common, a common time. And, uh, the next night I'm like, well, that, that's so annoying. I need to just add in, you know, praying for my pets and protection because it prayed over my house. And I was like, well, anyway, um, to make the, the I want to make this not such a long story, but I, I was thinking about, you know, I've noticed in my own life that, Yes, I understand these demons are using very legalistic reasons to attach to me. But if I become hyper aware of all the ways they could attach to me, I I honestly end up kind of calling more in. I will I will have more small battles, get casting them away, getting them away, feeling their attachments to me. So I I prayed a lot of last week was like, okay, God, I I love what we did, but I don't want to live a life where I am sin conscious. And God showed me, um, he gave me this really beautiful vision uh, as I was seeking him on this. And he showed me Dakota, when you are keep your eyes on me and on Jesus, even if you sense something demonic coming by, like trying to like, hey, like test or or just kind of br not even really touch, but like brush up against my own spiritual protection. He goes, don't interact. You can be aware of it, but don't interact. Just keep your eyes on me. And then any attack that demon had on me, the the glory of God overtook that demon. It became a counterattack without even me trying. And I just was curious on your thoughts on that, because it's almost a new concept to me. Like there's casting out, there's times for casting out, but then there's also this just sitting with Jesus and that being this natural repellent. What do you think? Yes, I, honestly, that's a perfect way of putting it, because that's what when I start, first started doing this. So like it was probably about like two years ago when I first realized, because like I would always see demons and spirits around everywhere, but I like on people I think it's because they're inside them. I don't know. I, I don't see them unless I like mm -hmm. touch them or I pray over them and stuff, or I'm like actively trying to, you know? Yes. And so I remember the first time God really convicted me and told me like, I need to pray over myself and see if any demons, I remember I was like, that's ridiculous. Like, and he's like, okay, then pray the prayer. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then like, I remember then I felt all this stuff and I was like, oh my gosh, like, and I had all these demons in me and I cast them all out and do all this stuff. Like same thing after you, I was exhausted. I was wiped and stuff. And then I remember like being the next few weeks, like hyper aware, like, oh my gosh, like God, please forgive me. Like, and I was like, 
like going insane. And I was like, God, like I can't live living like this. in fear. Yes. Yeah. You couldn't do it. Yes. And God really taught me, you know, and he showed me verses. I'm so bad at memorizing where verses are from. Um, forgive me. But like, there's one verse where he says, uh, like how generational, his generational blessings, like a uh, triumph over any generational curses or anything like that, you know? And so like with all this stuff I've learned, you know, even now that I do this full time, like just helping people all day, every day with deliverances, I've learned before each session, I make sure that I don't have anything attached to me. And, you know, I cast stuff out of myself all day, every day, you know, and I've learned it's really, you can't worry about it. You can't stress about it because God is greater than all of it, you know? And unfortunately we live in this fallen world that is, it says Satan is the God of this world in the Bible, you know, like we, he is in control of this world, unfortunately, and stuff, you know? So these things are just everywhere. You're going to sin. That's the whole reason we need God. We need Jesus because nothing we ever do could ever be good enough, you know? And even like that, it's like just learning to focus on him and just trying to be the best you can be and focus. You know, that's why I think there's so many verses where God says, think about things that are good, that are righteous, that are pure, that are holy and stuff, you know, because just like there's all these demons that are embodiments of envy and lust and anger and rage there's just as many if not more angels that are spirits of embodiments of joy and peace and patience and kindness friendship every good quality as well you know so it's like i've really learned like it sounds new agey and stuff but it's it's just what it is like your thoughts really create the energy around you so so when you're focusing on god and you're giving thanks for his creation and you're thinking and being grateful for the things he's given you and being grateful and like trying to spread joy and Focusing on him, you're going to be more joyful. You're going to have more patience. You're going to be more kind. You're going to, and by doing so, you're going to attract good and positive things. And so if there are any demons around, there's nothing there for them to feed off of. Mm -hmm. Because like these, like I said, like with all these demons and angels, like they don't make us do anything. They just enhance what's already there, you know? And so that's why it's like all these demons and stuff I've learned. It's like, okay, yeah, sure. You could have 20 demons attached to you. But if you're focusing on God and you're you're not giving into any of those negative thoughts, like you said, like they're trying to put those, you're not giving into those, then there's, they have no power. They don't have any power, yes. you know? And that's why I say they get so caught up on these little legal loopholes and stuff because that's all they have, mm -hmm. that they don't have anything else. They, they lost the battle. They lost the war that we're in when Jesus died on the cross. Mm -hmm. You know, we have all the power. It's just being aware of it. And, you know, and I've really learned that the ones that really affect people negatively and stuff are usually the generational spirits, the one that are passed down and attached to either bloodline, genetics, DNA or bone marrow, because those ones, like no matter what you repent of or cast them out and stuff, they won't leave until you specifically address like the root cause of that. So even like that, it's like a lot of times with this, like I, I tell a lot of my clients after helping them with this, because I get a lot of people like trying to book other sessions and stuff and like freaking out. And they're like, I, I like, I just want to make sure there's nothing like I can't. And like, I've just learned, like, I just try to tell them all, you know, like you got to just focus on God, just focus on being the best version of yourself. You can be like, yeah. try to please God and stuff, you know, and that's going to naturally just triumph over the darkness as yeah. well. You know? And I want to, I want to add something to what you're, you're saying, because I know both of us get accused of being like, well, I get accused of being in witchcraft a lot just because oh, yeah, people like, yeah, it's, it's so annoying. I'm like, I cannot oh, scream oh. Jesus louder. Yeah. Um, and it's so annoying. But one of the things that come That's with psychic that. Medium. That's yeah. Wait, oh man, there's, I have, I have stories on that one. But anyways, um, when it comes to uh, the, the, almost like the, it's the thoughts and those, those kinds of thoughts focusing on what's good, pure, righteous, and holy. Um, what I have also seen that is not part of anything from new age or controlling your thoughts is that when you do just seek, seek God and the Holy Spirit, they're entering your heart, working in your heart. And then all of a sudden they naturally start changing your heart. So you only want to think about those things. It do, It's not like when we're talking about, uh, yes, keep your, your eyes and thoughts on the things of God and Jesus. It's not like that much of an effort. Like I just yeah. kind of, if I'm maybe in a negative space, maybe I need like a little momentum push, like, okay, I'm going to bring myself back to Jesus. But almost once I kind of like pull myself a little bit over, it's almost like the tide of Jesus just takes over. And that's, it's just a natural thing that's born in me. And yeah. that's when it becomes easy again to think about it. Cause I know a lot of people, um, a lot of people who are very involved in understanding spiritual warfare get just so legalistic about it. And that's not what God called us to do. 
And yet you're in a really interesting position because you have to be aware of how the demons operate and how God operates and they're completely different systems. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's honestly, you said everything perfectly. Like that's amazing the way you put it. And that's what I've learned. So doing this, like, yeah, I'll make sure that um, to get rid of everything on people and get rid of them the way, because I view myself kind of like as a, an exterminator, you know, where it's like, I'm yeah. going in there I'm gonna get rid of and clear everything out so that there's nothing left, mm -hmm. you know, but then it's kind of up to you. Like, and that's the way I kind of describe it as well. So if you think of it that way, like think of them like bugs, you know, think about it like bugs in your house, you know, you'll never, no matter how hard you try, you will never be able to get your house completely 100% bug free. It's just not going to happen. It's just, there's too many, they're able to hide in the crevices and the cracks, like everywhere, you know, but when they get bad, when there's an infestation or they start causing damage to the house or damage to you or affecting you guys, like in your day-to-day -day life, that's when you need to get rid of, that's when they're, that's creating a problem, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff. And so I, I kind of compare it similarly to like the demons and stuff like that, you know, where it's yeah. like, yeah, they're around and stuff, but like they're, you're never really going to be like able to free get completely free from them that's just how life is we're imperfect humans that's why we need jesus because we're so flawed we live in such a flawed world or even like you you're indirectly attacked by them all the time and stuff by the stuff you eat or the stuff you watch or you know and so like it's just really learning to focus on god and his kingdom and just living in his presence more and more and just focusing on that you know Yes. Um, oh, so yeah. beautiful. See, it comes back to Jesus yeah. and again, freedom. Mm -hmm. And oh man, I have like 10,000 topics we could talk about in what we yeah. already have, but I want to talk about Bali. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what you have seen spiritually on the opposite side of the world in which you are raised. So, so, um, a little backstory on why I'm so curious is I got to go to Thailand, which is, I mean, they're a whole lot, Bali and Thailand are a whole lot closer than Thailand really and America. And yeah. um, the spirits were different. Um, they, when I saw spirits, they were um, almost lazier is what I mm -hmm. noticed a lot of them. And it was because they had been so accepted in culture. They were sort of like fat on energy. They're like, eh, I, don't nice. need to I don't need to, I don't need to put in a ton of effort, you know, cause I'll just get my next meal quick. They weren't so motivated to really um, trick me or take me down because they were so accepted. So, okay, so this story in particular, it was my first hotel room in Thailand. And I, I pray over every yeah. new hotel room I go in because I mean, it's just, it's helpful. Yeah. Otherwise I sometimes have weird dreams in these hotels. Yeah. Okay, Always. so um, as I was praying, I, in wow. my spiritual ears, I heard two spirits talking to each other and they're like, oh, this is a new one. What should we do? I don't know. How could we maybe approach her? Let's see if we could get attached. Like they were so nonchalant and yeah. casual with each other. I heard them and I say, ask them this test. Did Jesus Christ come in the flesh? Which is from first John four in the Bible testing, you know, you know, any spirit of the Antichrist. I'm telling it for the people who are listening. That's the test. Um, and I heard the surprise in their voice and they say to each other, they're still shocked. I can hear them. And they go, did she just say Jisoo? And then when I heard them, you know, not immediately responding to me, I'm like, okay, you're definitely not of God. So I said, in Jesus's name, get out. And then I heard them both scream as they left because it's painful to, um, or at least what I've seen, it's painful for a lot of them to try to resist the, yeah. and so then they get upset. So they got cast out and I was like, that was different. Later that night, I come back to the hotel room. I'm about to sleep. And then I hear another spirit come in. And this one reminded me of the ones I deal with in America. It was like, mm -hmm. hello, I've been waiting for you. And yeah. it was it was sinister. And I said, in Jesus' name, get out. Same response. It left screaming. But what I realized just happens, and Jesus did talk about this in the Bible, of I cast those two out, lower level. They had never met any resistance in this hotel. Mm -hmm. And... um. And then they went and got what they considered a more powerful friend, still no match for the name of Jesus. But it yeah. taught me, that was just the beginning of how the spirits were different. And most of the spirits I encountered were like those, those first two, a little lazy. Okay. So what has been your experience? Yeah. So it is like that. And, you know, even just the way they look, I've mm. noticed is very different where it's like, I, I brought this to show an example because I this little mug that's in my hotel yeah, room, like you know, like, I saw a few of those. Like, I mean, they look like that, like not exactly, but you know, like similar, like weird tucks and like face, but like 
I don't see any like that in America. Yeah. Never. Like, yeah. you know, they look in America, they just look different. Like they're just more like how we see them in our movies and shows kind of or like like monster looking, like, you know, shadowy, vampire-ish kind of. Mm -hmm. But here they're much more like beastly or like uh yeah. which is interesting. You know, I was talking to God about it and I really felt like he was saying, like, well, why do the people here in Indonesia look different? You know? It's just like, why do people, people look, we look different depending on where we're from in the world, yeah. you know, I feel like it's the same thing spiritually almost like that, you know, it's like different regions have different kinds of spirits and stuff like that. But it is interesting because even the laziness, like I have noticed that as well. It's like a lot of them are fat here, like yes. in the, because so here in Bali, it's the main religions are Hinduism and Islam. Um, those are the two main religions that almost all the native people here are. Mm -hmm. And, um, so like, uh, like you walk down any street, you walk past several Hindu temples and stuff. You yeah. know, they have like little incense burners everywhere. And like, I was asking people, they're like, oh, those are offerings to Krishna and all this stuff. And like, you know, so a lot of them, like I walked by one and these people were doing offerings and they were like praying. And I see this one yeah. spirit there, like drawing in its spirits and stuff. Like, like and I remember breathing in. Yeah. And I remember I was just like, I wanted to test it. So I literally just, just like tried to rebuke it. And I had never felt such a strong connection. Like it was like, I had no ability to rebuke it because like I was walking on the other side of the street. So I wasn't in its territory. Um, it was like, it, they were worshiping it and stuff. And it was like interesting because I've never felt like a, like usually when I rebuke them or something, like even if they don't, if I don't necessarily have like the legal rights and stuff, like they'll leave. But like with that, I've never tried to do it when someone's actively praying to them. Yeah. Or like worse. And you know, it's like, it's like, that's what gives them the legal right to over this like city and or yes. the islands that, you know, um, yes. so to be, to be clear, the reason that thing wasn't budged in that moment by the name of Jesus in your rebuke was because yeah. it was fully anchored to this group of people that yeah. was saying, I want you, I worship you, I give you of me. So they were anchored yes. to the, the, ah, the other yeah, human no. beings. Um, yeah. Okay. And I wasn't interacting with those human beings. They didn't ask for my help. They don't have Jesus in their heart. They haven't accepted Jesus as their heart. They're willingly praying to this thing. I wasn't in its territory. So that's why it's like I had no legal right to cast it out or get rid of it. You know? yeah. And, you know, um, when Jesus did a lot of his ministry, it was he really like went where he preached, but he let a lot of people come to him. And that was yeah. a natural filter. They actually wanted help. Um, yes. there's only one, I, uh, I was reading in acts where there was one example where there was a woman that was demon possessed and she, she didn't want to get free, but, um, there, the demon inside her was making her shout out. These are the followers of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, and being so obnoxious that I think I'm pretty sure it was Paul turned around and we was like, come out of her. And yeah. it was almost because the demon was sort of being so obnoxious and attacking Paul, I think that maybe had had built a connection, but that was like the only time I that I read in the Bible so far where the person is not like seeking help themselves or family members yeah. not seeking help for mm -hmm. that person. So it's interesting to see how that plays out. And Jesus would tell his disciples, if the town doesn't want you, shake the dust off your feet, which I yeah. also think that dust is like spiritual dirt, like just shake yeah. it off and go mm -hmm. to where you're wanted. Um, so anyway, that's just... It's fascinating. Yeah, no, that, that, yeah, it's perfect. That's exactly what it is. And so that's why it's interesting here, even like when I came here as well, I could see like, uh, so everywhere I go, God has really shown me like principalities over places, you know? Mm -hmm. So like every city around the world has a ruling spirit over it. That's a principality. It's like the ruling spirit that's in charge of that area that has like a legal right there. And that kind of affects anybody that's in its territory, you know? Yeah. Um, that Good makes sense because yeah, because I want to I want to bring it. You know how people say like, oh, there's just a vibe to different cities. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. part of the vibe is these exactly. principalities over the whole city. Okay, go on. And that's why like you'll go to some towns and you're like, mm, like it's nice, it's clean, but I don't know. Everyone here is kind of weird. I just get weird. I don't feel comfortable here. And then you go to other places. Oh, I love it. Like it's beautiful. Everyone's so nice. Like so welcoming. Like you know. And even if they're the same geographically and stuff, it's like there is a difference because it's the ruling spirit over it. Mm -hmm. And so the same thing then as well. I've seen it where each, in America, each state has one over it then. Oh, that's mm -hmm. like so it's a hierarchy. Right. And then there's one over each country as well. So here in Bali, 
I noticed that there was a big one over the entire um, island of Bali. Mm -hmm. And so, but at first when I got here, I felt like, like, I was like, God, do you want me to get rid of it? And he was like, no, not yet. Like, you don't, there's not, this isn't time to engage right now because I was in its territory, but it wasn't affecting me or anything. Like it had every legal right to be there because it was invited and welcomed in and stuff, you know, by the people there and the worship there. Mm -hmm. But when I, so I got here Wednesday night and I did my first deliverance session here on a Thursday, that next day. Okay. And so I was helping someone with deliverance. And the whole time, as soon as I started, I see this massive principality walking up towards me. I see it in the spirit realm, a powering above. And it looks like this massive, it's a face is like similar to this one on this cup, you know, mm -hmm. where it's like a weird artistically face like yeah. that, but it's skin like black. And it was like oozing. It was like slimy. It looks so gross. Yeah. And I forget, it was like a spirit. I could feel that it was a, a spirit of like um, overindulgence is what it was. Um, and so it was like a, the spirit of overindulgence, which is kind of makes sense, I guess, Bali, I didn't know this before coming here. It's it's kind of known as like a party island or like a yeah. it's known for like beach clubs and all this yeah. stuff. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it kind of makes sense, you know. And so the whole time I was doing this deliverance, I could see it. And so I just I didn't have time to deal with it. I felt like God was saying, not yet, do it after and stuff. And I was like, okay. So I saw he was sending angels and stuff to protect me in my room and stuff and like keep this at bay. So it wasn't, and it was like throwing balls of slime at me, like in the spirit. And, but like the angels were protecting and keeping it. Mm. Yeah. So then afterwards he had me, okay, now it's, since it's engaged with you and it's tried to attack you, now you have permission to engage with it. Ah, you know, now God knows what he's doing. He was like, I'm going to bait this thing into exactly. engaging with one of my best warriors here. Okay. Because now once it engaged, then I have every legal right to defend myself. You know, because now I'm a steward of God here in Bali. I can claim this as his kingdom, where he says his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, and so with that, I rebuke it. I have to pray over <laughs> getting rid of principalities. It's I always tell people, you know, this is I would not recommend it if mm -hmm. you don't know what you're dealing with. You know, if because if you do one little thing wrong, like I said, if you don't know the rules of engagement like this and stuff like you will they're much more powerful than these, like these piddly little demons that are attached to like hating your hair and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> they're not going to, they can, they can affect your life. Um, and so with this though, I pray over the whole Island of Valley and stuff. I rebuke it. I cast it out. I sever all ties that it has to any part of us because Island. And then I always just ask God to just send whatever spirit he wants in charge of the Island. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then it's like, he, I can see like this whole darkness and slime in the spirit realm coming off of Bali and leaving with this spirit as I pray over all of Bali and then it's like this spirit of, it was a spirit of forgiveness that God put in charge of Bali. And wow. it's this, I'd never seen this spirit before. It was absolutely beautiful. It looked like a, it was a man, it was more masculine and it had like, it was just covered in white feathers, like its whole body. And like, it was just pure white. And it's like, I see it take root in the island of Bali and it was just spreading out everywhere. And it, everywhere was just full of like white feathers and stuff. Like it was absolutely beautiful and stuff. So, you know, I haven't, dealt with it since then i have dealt with a lot more demons trying to attack me and stuff but like so i've just it's been a lot of very heavy spiritual warfare since yeah. i've been here um because now it's like these things are mad that i uprooted their you took principality the over the island. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so now it's like the ruling ones over the cities and stuff are but they're not attacking me so because i think they don't want me to have to get rid of them you know um but so like it's a lot of these other things that are trying to affect me and stuff where I've been having to really deepen my relationship with God and like really try to listen to him more and go where he wants me to go and like mm -hmm. only eat places he's telling me to eat. Like one place I really wanted to eat and I just had a really bad feeling about it. He's like, don't eat there. Like, do not eat at this place. Like, do not go here. I will show you a better restaurant. And he's like, keep walking down the street, turn right. And you're going to eat at that restaurant right there. I was like, okay, amazing restaurant. The one that he took me to. And so like, I've really been learning with all this stuff, like, I've never been to a country where it's not predominantly Christian or like yeah. Catholic or some kind of Christian denomination. So it's interesting to see it like this. I've never been somewhere where it's like, as soon as I landed in the airport, I could feel it like in the air, like it's just heavy. Like there's just, there's demons everywhere, you know, and walking down the street and stuff, I'm normally fine because I have God with me. They can't do anything to me. I'm not engaging with them and stuff, but like, they're just everywhere on the buildings, around people. They're just like, 
little goblin. Like I said, like they look like all these little fat, like goblin things. There's prawn around everywhere and stuff. Yeah, yes. it's very interesting. It's different. You don't really see even the more demonically oppressed places in America. They're not like quite like this, where it's like here's just kind of like overrun by them, you know, where it's like there's just way more of them than there is <laughs> angels or other spirits like that. Yeah, because they've been they've been much more invited. Um wow. Okay. You know, I have so many questions I could I could go with this one, but I I what you just described of on you arrived on Wednesday. Thursday you had a deliverance session and that is when the the principality over Bali saw you, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I've noticed something in the spirit of, I know we're talking about a lot of the dark stuff and we're going to be talking about angels today too. Um, but when, when you, okay, I call it like a lighthouse effect and it feels like when I step out into, you know, we've talked about different dimensions. I think there's a dimension that the demons tend to hang out on. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so I've noticed in, in, in my seeing and trying to figure this out that when I go out and and I don't even know, it's almost like just shine or just like even try to connect or something like that. I see demons suddenly rush towards me and I feel like I've turned on myself as a lighthouse. They see mm -hmm. myself as potential energy available and they rush to try to, to me to try to get attached to that. And Jesus has really tr had to teach me like Dakota, you can interact on some of these dimensions, but you have to find a way to guard your heart and not just yeah. let that light shine in all cases. Um, I'm still figuring out <laughs> what exactly that means. But um, and then there are other times where God's like, let it shine and we'll battle everything away. But I'm curious on do you feel like something like that happened when you actively went stepped into spiritual warfare affair and maybe like turned yes. your light on or something? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to pause this really quick. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know. I like, since we, right before we started, I was feeling a little weird in my stomach, but like, it's something's really affecting my stomach. I don't know if it's something I ate earlier. I just, I have to just pause for a second. Yep. Do what I'll you need to do. As as I come back, but I'm so sorry. All right. At this point, Phoenix had to get up and leave the video call and use the restroom while I sat and I just continued to pray for him. I paused the recording and when he came back, we both agreed there is something very spiritual going on. Okay. All right. So um, for this prayer, I'm, I'm basing it on actually a verse that you pulled up on one of your TikToks, which is Ephesians 5, somewhere around 11. And yeah. it's, I just pulled it up right now. I love having the internet available on this. Okay. So yeah. it's, um, you might know it off the top of your head, but yeah. And uh, have no fellowship yeah. with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather expose them. Mm -hmm. That means so much to me because sometimes I don't, I don't like, um, I don't know. I feel like I just focus on like these demons so much, but it, it is a part of what I see. So I love having someone to talk about it with. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yet that's what we're doing. And I think both of us were, were feeling like something's not quite, quite right. So I'm just, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and lead this prayer. Um, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Ah, and God's also letting me know this prayer also, it, it it's it's giving you a line of support because as you're going in, very powerful, but you're also, I think the one of the only Christians you know right now, or maybe the only Christian you know right now, oh. and uh, no, no spirit's going to be taking advantage of that because you also have this support right here. Um, okay. I appreciate that. Yes. Dear God <laughs> and Jesus, yes, I see Jesus, this this armor, and thank you for offering that to me, and Phoenix is already suited up. In Jesus' name, I spread from the authority that I have in here and this interaction that, that I have with Phoenix, taking that authority to just absolutely bless the entire room and, and hotel and whole area that Phoenix is in. In Jesus' name, this place will be a place of rest always. And in fact, wherever Phoenix goes, he'll be able to wrap up this blessing of peace, take it with him and put it down right wherever he rests. In Jesus's name, he is able, he will and is able to rest, be at peace. Wherever he goes is, is the embassy, is the embassy of the kingdom of heaven. 
Uh, in Jesus' name, I rebuke uh, any any spirits that aren't of God that have been trying to tap away at the boundaries. And right now, I command a, a double helping of God's glory wash over anything that's been demonically messing with Phoenix. Mm, God, and thank you for that, that rest, that sense of rest, physical and spiritual, emotional rest. Oh, that Phoenix is going to have get to enjoy and have to enjoy now, but get to enjoy while he is here. Mm, in Jesus' name. Phoenix, do you feel like you want to pray anything specific? Yeah, yeah. So, God, we just thank you and praise you for everything that you're doing in Dakota and my lives and everyone listening to this podcast, God. And I just ask you to bless and saturate and cover every part and aspect of mine and Dakota and every part and aspect of everyone listening to this all clean with the blood of Jesus Christ, the fire of the Holy Spirit and living water. And just bless and anoint all of us, God, with your heavenly spirit, God, and just pour out your spirit onto both of us. And just let us speak and guide this podcast, God, and just guide our conversations and let us speak about the things you want us to speak about and talk about and glorify you, God, and just bring attention to the things that you want us to bring attention to, God. And just bless and protect us in everything that we do during this podcast and just send your heavenly host, your angels to guard us round about both above and below and against every dimensional access point, God, in the past, present, and future and just surround us, God, with your presence, God, and just let people when they hear this podcast to just feel your presence, God, and feel the presence of the Holy Spirit washing over them and letting them know that what we are speaking is true and that you and let show them your love and your presence through this podcast, God, and just let us just use this to glorify you in every way possible, God. And we just thank you and praise you for everything that you've done. In your name, amen. 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 Oh, how are you feeling now? I feel way better now. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. way better. It was, it was crazy. That was weird. It was literally like a huge rush. Mm -hmm. of, of physical know. unwellness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, while we have been talking, so funny, I'm so used to doing this on the side in the background when I talk with people, yeah. but I can feel when demonic stuff kind of, again, brushes up against my own protection and they're, they're trying to fling thoughts at me, things that have worked in the past to get attached. And Jesus has also been right with me. And he goes, Dakota, you're not going to directly cast those away right now. Just focus on me and my glory will grow and it will send them away. And so I could feel that about... Um, probably like 20 minutes in, like uh, suddenly like, oh, <laughs> I didn't say hello, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm aware of you. Interesting. Yeah. See, so this, yeah. to me, this is like, um, I really feel like, man, internet is so amazing sometimes because I feel like um, through this prayer and connection, like I can offer some, I don't know, some of the angelic support here from, I've got from America yeah. and like mm -hmm. just bolster what you have. Um, but yeah. I do know that as we talk about this and we are exposing a lot, bless you, um, you. that, <laughs> uh, sorry, that's just funnier to say bless you in this context, but, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um, but that we, I think we are being those, those, uh, lighthouses and, mm -hmm. and, uh, it attracts everything. It, yeah, it, it, it attracts everything, but it doesn't have to matter. And we just need to take these moments to pray sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And to go off the question that you asked me before <laughs> I had to go, um, <laughs> this, like I do, I've noticed that whenever I pray in the spirit realm and stuff, it always, you know, as a kid, that's, it used to terrify me. I used to, when I would look in the spirit, I felt like it would scare me because I could feel as soon as I looked or tapped into like looking in the spirit realm, I could feel every spirit within like at least a mile radius. Literally, I felt all their attention come to me and they all surged towards me. Yeah. And as a kid, especially when I remember being home alone and that happened once. And then like just sitting in the living room with a blanket over my head, watching the TV, like trying to ignore and like hearing doors slam and like the lights turn on and off and like all this stuff happening. And just being like, oh, like I'm just gonna wait till mom and dad get home or like, you know, and so mm -hmm. even as a kid, I noticed that. And so, but as I got older and stuff and I started growing in my walk with God and stuff. And then I realized I was like, well, I'm not the one that should be afraid of this. You know, it's them that should be afraid of this, you know, because the light exposes the darkness. Darkness is just the absence of light, you know? And so even with all that, it's like, yeah, they're trying to extinguish this, but like they can't, you know, they can't do anything. They can only do, it's like what everything we were just talking about and stuff today, where it's like, 
they can only do what we give them permission to do. They can only come into our lives if we give them permission to, you know? And so like a lot of times with this, when you are engaging in doing the Lord's work or doing what God has commanded you to do or doing something for his kingdom, there's nothing that can stop that. There's nothing, no amount of demons can do that. You know, I've cast out some very high, powerful ranking demons that a lot of people would know their names and stuff, but like they don't, even those ones can't do anything. Give Jesus. me one example. Cause I know people are going to be curious. Um, like Lucifer, I see him more often than you think attached really? to people. And then what um, is, he, what is he so into people's lives? Cause you told me they, they represent. Yeah. So life. he, um, he's always attached to the sin of pride, but specifically pride for your own accomplishments or achievements. Um, and it's interesting as well. I always see him attached to anybody that's ever been involved with the new age ever. If anyone was into yeah. New Age at all, they always have Lucifer attached to them. Every well, that time. makes so much sense because New Age is all about you manifest your own desires. Um, yeah. And, and it's about your self-development. That makes a lot of sense to me. And it also makes sense because we're told in the in the fall or like Lucifer fell because I believe because he's like, I can do wow. this myself. I can be yeah. God myself. So that makes so much sense. That That's where you see that. Um Okay, but I want to I want to shift gears a little bit and ask you like about Jesus. So, yeah. have you have you seen Jesus and what is that like? I see him a lot as well and you know even I can always tell when someone's a Christian because when I'm praying over them I can see the light of Jesus Christ inside of them. Like wow. it's like this when the way I see it is like this golden it's like a liquid gold that's just like inside them radiating eating out of them and stuff you know yeah. and so especially like at the end of a deliverance session like once we've gotten rid of everything it's like i can just see it shining and like the person is just full of light you know it's like they're just pure light like that you know nothing and it's like mm -hmm. yeah and that's the whole thing is like you know it's like we he's in all of us you know and that's how like we are supposed to be embodiments of him we're so uh, to, uh, to aspire to be like him and stuff you know and so that's where it's like because he was a perfect human, you know? And so like, that's what we're trying to achieve, like that, try to be like him, you know, where it's like, try to emulate him and his characteristics and all that stuff. So I see him a lot like that, or sometimes, not every time, but a lot of times when I'm praying over people and stuff or casting things out, sometimes I'll see him, like while I'm praying in the spirit realm, I'll see him come up to them in the spirit realm and like touch them and like get rid of things or like, I'll hear yeah. him tell them messages and like, or things that he wants me to tell them that he's saying to them or like mm -hmm. other stuff like that. So I do see him a lot. I consider <laughs> it's funny because now I do this full time. I'm always like, Oh, my coworkers are God and Jesus and the Holy spirit, you know, like, Fantastic. I just see them all the time and they all kind of manifest differently in the spirit realm. Like, yeah, it's, it's, I experience the same him. thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's him. It's the same one, but it's just him in different forms like that, you know, where it's like, in this form, he's more doing this and this, like, you know, where it's like, so I do, I see Jesus all the time. And it's like, he literally just radiates just like how all these demons and angels that radiate, whatever, like, oh, like peace, joy, or like wrath or lust or whatever. He's just like joy or sorry, not joy, love. I mean, he's like, it's literally just love. Mm -hmm. And like, it's like just this overwhelming, like nothing you do could ever stop that love. And yes. it's like, he. People don't realize that way. It's, 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 it sounds cheesy, you know, when people are like, oh, God is love and stuff. But like, no, like you love isn't a good enough word for it. Right. It's like we need some other word for it because that's like, yeah, it's love. But it's like that's not even like that's such an understatement for like what he really embodies and like radiates and just his very presence just brings. It's like just it's incredible. Honestly, it's just amazing. And I'm like, if anyone were to see this, you know, like or anyone can feel this like this is all that really matters. You know, then you realize everything is true. You realize that like everything that he was preaching and stuff, like all his messages and stuff, like it's just because he loves us and he just cares so much about us mm -hmm. and our world and like just us, you know, where it's like, yeah. uh, he's so cool. He's like the coolest person around. So, you I, know, like, I exists, concur. You know? it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like, he's, and there's just like no judgment ever, like nothing. You know, even like the stuff people are so ashamed of or so embarrassed and sometimes rightfully so. Sometimes like it's stuff that's pretty dark or something, but it doesn't matter. You know, he doesn't care. He died for everybody, mm -hmm. you know, and say, oh, unless you did this sin, or oh, unless you did like, no, like he died for everybody's sins, you know, mm -hmm. where it's like nothing. We're never too far gone. Nothing we do could ever diminish that love or that light that he has and stuff, you know. I, I love thinking he literally just looks whenever I see him, he just looks like a being of pure light. 
it's like that that golden liquid light I see. It's like I can see it in the shape of like a man. Okay. And somebody says like it's just he's so bright that I just that's all I see. Um, I don't ever I can't ever see his features or anything when I see him. But you recognize um, his energy. Yeah. And then yeah. is he often like man sized or is he bigger or smaller? He's usually man sized. Yeah. He is usually like he just looks just like a man, but just <laughs> pure light. It's just pure love like that, you know? Um, but yeah, yeah. He's always, that's interesting. I never even realized that, but yeah, he's always just man sized. He's always coming up around. He's, I see him hugging people a lot or kissing them on the head or like just grabbing their shoulders. And like, it's, it's he's like so wholesome, you know? I, okay. I'm going to say this to just the, the viewers and listeners. I want you guys to imagine Jesus full of light and love coming up, hugging you around the shoulders and kissing you on top of the head. Okay. Imagine that. And for, <laughs> for so many times I've seen, um, this is, this is also what I do is help guide people into, well, into Jesus's love. And sometimes that means into opening their own spiritual eyes, if that's the gift that God has given them. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of times, one of the biggest blocks is people not even giving themselves permission to think mm -hmm. Jesus would approach me. Right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. So when I say this kind of permission, like I want people to imagine that, I want you to imagine that right now. That's also Jesus's permission to be like, finally, I can yeah. hug you. Um, mm -hmm. And so for if anyone experienced that warmth, please recognize that's truly Jesus stepping up um, with his presence in your life. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's I why I say I love you because it's like he's never, no one is ever not good enough for him or like to be in his presence or to see him and stuff, you know, because I'll get comments on my videos were like, Oh, you see Jesus every day. Like that's, no one does that. And it's like, well, you could do it too. Anybody could do it. You know? Thank it's you. Like, I, Oh my goodness. That's a comment. I get a lot that I, I get it so much. It, it bothers me, yeah. but it also doesn't. And I oh, just, yeah, like, oh, oh. Uh, I don't know. Well, that... It's annoying. Yeah. Cause it's like, no, like that's what people think. I'm like, no, like I'm literally like, <laughs> I'm literally just a guy. Like I don't, I'm not special. I just listen to what God tells me to do. You know, and I think that's the difference with, with a lot of people. It's like a lot of times people just don't listen, I think, you know, and I think he tells us to seek out the gifts of the spirit and stuff, you know, and like first Corinthians, second Corinthians, he tells us to seek earnestly, seek all these and stuff, you know, the gift of seeing the spirit and speaking in tongues and prophesying and all this stuff, you know, like we're supposed to want that and stuff, you know, because in order to get that, you have to have a closer relationship with God. You have to develop it. And like, because it's only through him that it even happens. You know that it can develop and pour out and stuff like that you know yes mm -hmm. oh my goodness there's that's just so good i feel like i need to ask you though as a holy spirit thing of course um what was the first time you saw jesus the first time i saw jesus or near the beginning yeah i think it was uh, a couple of years ago when i did my first deliverance on myself um, not the very first deliverance that I did on myself, but like, it was shortly after that when I was really struggling, I just felt like all these demons kept coming back and I was like, what's the point? What's the point of doing this? Like, I feel like I'm just going to keep messing up. I'm going to keep sitting and stuff. And it was like, I was just praying and sobbing and stuff. And there was all these demons in my room that I'd been casting out every day for weeks and stuff. And like, I remember just feeling so hopeless and stuff. And I remember Jesus walking into my room, my bedroom and he just like spread his arms and they were all gone. And it was like, everything was gone. I felt like everything else that I wasn't even paying attention was gone. I felt lighter than I'd ever felt before. And it was like, he just came up to me and it was like, he just was like, you are your own worst enemy and that you just need to focus on me. And ever since I remember him like telling me that and just coming up and literally laying his hands as I was laying on the ground, he like told me to get up. And I, so I stood up Yeah. <laughs> you know, and he like just laid his hands on me and said, you are your own worst enemy and you need to stop doubting yourself and just listen to me. And, you know, and I remember that's that moment. And then like, it just like that, then he was gone and he was gone, but I can still feel him in me and stuff, you know, like, but like, he wasn't like there, like there, there, like he was, but that was the first time I had ever really seen him because I remember I was like, at first I was like, what is this fear? Like this one seems stronger than any I've ever seen. And then I was like, it was scary at first. It was kind of like, I was like, whoa, who is this? And then I was like, oh, like, it's Jesus. Like, because then it was like, I could just feel his, like, he just radiated love. And it was like, I just knew. Just like I know when I see a spirit of, like, luster or whatever it is, he, like, I can just tell what it is. Because I just, you can feel what they emanate. And, well, like, I think what that's they a really 
that's a really cool part of your gift that um, I've, I've, it's, it's so interesting to compare notes between them and, and that, oh man, there's so many things I want to comment on. And that part, but I want to point out that I think a really cool part of your gift is that naming and quickly knowing the names, because for me, I can see them. And then if I ask God or like seek, I'm like, can you like tell me the name? Then it'll come to me. But for you, it's almost instantaneous. And that's, that's beautiful. And when you're talking about being frightened, when you first see Jesus, um, I, I know what that's, that's like. And the first time I saw Jesus, I was, I fortunately had not been surrounded by demons. I was in church and yeah. he walked in the center aisle, um, in the church. And he, I, I don't even think he looked at me that first time. Cause I was so overwhelmed and I get, I can see his, his features. Um, and a lot of times when he's working, when Jesus is, I guess, working, like, like you described of, um, putting hands on people or, or like casting something out himself or like doing spiritual surgery. I've seen him do a lot of times. Yeah. Then I'll see his eyes as like that bright blue Holy spirit color. Oh, um, oh. But normally when he's just hanging out, his eyes are brown, like his natural human eyes. Anyways, um, I, it wasn't fearful that actually, no, I was a little scared that first time because he went to speak to a woman. Um, and then later in the service, he just stood and leaned against a wall kind of near me while I was in the middle of a pew. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yet. Oh. Jesus spent enough time with me that I couldn't keep the fear up. It was like exhausting yeah. to stay fearful of him. But yeah. there's a reason that when angels appear to people in the Bible, the first thing they say is do not be afraid. The power we experience is so intense. It, it takes a second to recognize this is from a different source, a more powerful source. Also, I think you had been so aware of the demons around you to switch into yeah. an awareness of Jesus. It goes mm -hmm. from like, oh, more power instantly means more fear. Jesus was offering something yeah. different. Anyway, it took a second, but he got you yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's even when you say that, it's like, it does make sense because I learned even seeing demons, I have to look differently than when I look for angels. Yeah. Like, you know, mm -hmm. They're like on different levels or like different dimensions or yes. something like that like that's they exist so that's why it's like even yeah when jesus came in i was like whoa what is this because it's so powerful but it was like different than any of those demons or anything and that's why i was scared at first because like what is this like mm -hmm. who is this like what spirit is this yeah, you're like now? i'm going down if this just came yeah. <laughs> uh, and then i was like oh <laughs> at least he's on thank god literally you know and like be like oh thank you like at least it's jesus like you know it's not anything to be scared of or anything so mm -hmm. Oh. It's so scary, like standing before him. It just seems awe inspiring. Like you were saying, like it's just like that fear. Like at first, you're like, oh my gosh, like it's him. It's like mm -hmm. him. Uh, mm -hmm. it's just... and, and he's like, yeah, this is just pure love. <laughs> no. Like, oh, what's up? He's like, uh -huh. oh, scared? Don't be scared. Like, Don't be scared. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. I, I truly can talk to you for, um, like, days and I really think at some point we're going to get to do like events together and like I want to put together conferences and yeah. you'll be one of the speakers and I'll be in you know it's going to be fantastic so at some point but um <laughs> to start to close us out <laughs> um what is one thing that yeah one thing that you wish that you could just communicate to people about the spirit world or about Jesus or spiritual warfare anything that you wish people understood yeah um honestly it's kind of like actually it's this it kind of goes into everything else we've been talking about with this already you know the number one spirits that i see attached to everybody mm -hmm. every single person i've yet to ever meet someone that didn't have some form of this kind of spirit mm -hmm. is self-doubt or doubting yourself hating yourself um um I can think of self, like uh, mm -hmm. being embarrassed of yourself, shame, like guilt, uh, like any of those, like all fall into the category of doubting yourself. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that I think that is the enemy's, one of his most powerful weapons, you know, because it's just like what we were talking about. People are like, oh, I couldn't see Jesus. Like, I'm not worthy. Like, no, we, none of us are worthy. That's the thing. He just <laughs> loves us so much. Like we all, we can do it. And so, you know, it's just like matter of stepping up to your calling. You know, and that's the thing is too, I, I try to tell people like, cause a lot of people I deal with, 
a lot of times God will have me pray over people's calling or their purpose and yeah. stuff, you know, and you there'll be demons really attached to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so a lot of times, a lot of the spirits that come up with that are always like, oh, not feeling good enough for God or feeling like a bad Christian or, and guess what? We're all bad Christians, you know? And that's the thing I think of our churches and stuff. We've learned, we just kind of rank sins like, oh, this sin's not as bad as this, but this sin's better than this. You know, this one's more socially acceptable. You can still be a pastor and do this, but if you do this as a pastor, then absolutely not. You know, where it's like, well, to God, it's all the same. You know, it's not really any different, you know, like, the demon of lust isn't any stronger than the demon of pride isn't any stronger than like, you know, like they're not like even that, like, cause I get a lot of people that ask me questions like, Oh, was this one stronger than anger? Or like, like, no, they're pretty much all on the same level, mm -hmm. like power wise, you know, yeah. hierarchy wise. Yeah. This one's above that one in commands these one, like whatever, but like power wise, like it's all the same. And I think a lot of people just get so caught up in like doubting themselves and feeling like they're not worthy or that they've screwed up too much to have a calling from God, or they've screwed up too much to be used by him or like, you know, and I've learned that is the biggest thing. And that's something that God has really convicted me a lot in my own life, where a lot of times like, especially when I started doing this gift and stuff or trying to help people, I'd be like, mm, I don't want to say that. So that seems too weird or all oh, that seems so specific or personal. And he's like, no, just say it, like, say it. You're hearing me correctly. You're just doubting yourself. And that's, disrupting my plan your your doubt my doubt was getting in the way of healing other people or getting them closer to god or fulfilling their own purposes and stuff by getting rid of demons that are affecting them and so i had to learn and get over myself and realize that guess what i am a flawed human i am gonna make mistakes i sin every day you know and no matter what i do that's never gonna change but what i can do is not give into that self-doubt when I do mess up, instead of dwelling and being like, oh, my gosh, I'm such a failure. Like, I can't believe I did this again. Being like, oh, I messed up. Like, God, thank you for forgiving me. And I'm going to do better. I'm not going to I'm going to try my best to not do this again. You know, and it's like learning to step up and just trying and focusing on God. Just everything is always just focus on God, you know, because when you're focusing on him, instead of if you're just focusing on the sin and be like, oh, I can't do this. I can't give into that. Then you're going to give into it because that's all you're focusing on. Yeah. You know, it's like. That's what I've really learned, too, is like a lot of times with these sins, it's like what we're talking about, people getting paranoid, like, oh, I can't think about that. Or the demon will come back. Like when you're just obsessing over it and stuff, then obviously you're going to because that's all you're thinking about, yes. you know. So that's why he says, like, no, just focus on me. Just take a deep breath. Like what he said to me, I feel like is applicable to everyone, you know, where you we are all our own worst enemies, you know, and we need to all stop doubting ourselves as Christians and thinking that, oh, just because you're not a pastor or something doesn't mean means that you can't have the gift of the spirit or that you can't see demons or that, you know, that's why I try to help people. People are like, oh, I, I couldn't handle seeing spirits or, oh, I'm just not worthy enough to have a gift like that. I'm like, do you know my life? I'm like, you know, you don't know the stuff I've done in my life. <laughs> I'm more worthy than anybody else. But because I like he just has a calling and purpose for everybody, you know, and a lot of times there's just sort of a doubt that just gets in the way of that. You know, and it's our doubt that thinks that we're not worthy enough or we're not good enough or that we can't do these things. And so that's my biggest takeaway from all this is that because a lot of times people don't even think of that as a sin. You know, people don't think of doubting yourself as a sin or hating yourself as a sin or talking rudely about yourself as a sin or guilt, feeling guilty for your past actions as a sin. You know, like, but it is. And the God has taught me, like, that's just as much of a sin as lust, as pride, mm -hmm. as murder, mm -hmm. you know. And we just downplay it because we're like, oh, doubt or guilt. That's just normal. Like you can't not live without that. No, you can. Mm -hmm. It's just learning to not dwell in it and live in that yes. shame and guilt. Like not dwell. We fearfully, yeah. We're fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, you know, where it's like he when you're doubting yourself and being like, oh, I'm not worthy or I'm too ugly or I'm too stupid or whatever. Like you're spitting in his face almost where it's like you're saying that he didn't make you good enough, you know, where it's like, no, he made you. With the DNA that you have for a reason. He puts you on this time and earth. He made you born at the exact moment for a reason. Because there's a purpose that you're here on earth for. And you have time to fulfill. Whether you fulfill that or not is up to you. And that's why I tell people like too. It's like getting rid of that self-doubt. Just trying to get rid of it. You know. And if that's something you struggle with. Then pray for it. You know one of my favorite verses where Jesus says. So bad at memorizing where they're from. But he says. You do not receive because you do not ask. You know. Yes. And like a lot of times it's like people just like ask him, you know, just ask, like, you want to get closer to God, ask him, 
you want to have gifts of the spirit, ask him for it, you know, like just ask, you know, a lot of times it's like, I feel like people were just not direct enough with this kind of stuff with anything spiritually with praying with passing things out. We're just like, always like, Oh, like in general, like overgeneralized prayers, which is fine. It's not bad, but like we could just be so much more powerful with our prayers and our lives than we are, you know? And if we just stop doubting ourselves and like stepping, like, no, I know I'm hearing God tell me to do this. Or like, no, I know God is telling me to do that or go say this to someone or go to this place or go move here or whatever it is, you know? And it's like, instead of just doubting and being like, well, is that really him or is that me? Or like, you know, it's like, just no, just go with it, you know, just learn to trust stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and just do it. And that's why I think that's my biggest message, I would say. That's amazing. Thank you so much. The way I want to end is that um, God loves to give me visions for people. And I was like, God, can you give me something for Phoenix? And uh, yeah. and so this is this is what I have for you. And I'm pretty sure it relates to, to Bali. Mm -hmm. What God showed me is you um, walking on a a path and it was I don't know why this is important but it was it was paved it had been a while since it had been paved but it was a paved path and something you did uh, as you walked on this as you walked on this path there was this gigantic bubble um mm -hmm. and inside the bubble was just gross green smoke nasty it was toxic it looked toxic you tapped it the entire bubble broke and inside when the smoke started to clear it was like a bomb had gone off inside mm -hmm. you had barely done anything to reveal this damage that was already here but as people were coming out of the smoke or people on the outside had seen now finally seeing the inside they were freaking out and it even had caused a little panic a lot of people had changed how they were and the the temptation for you was oh no i caused this mm -hmm. and what i saw god saying is mm -mm, that's all that's all i want uh it is my, it is it is it was your responsibility to you could see it like oh i just blew something up but really you just revealed a kind of damage yeah. that was already there and god yeah. said now phoenix you leave you are not responsible for fixing the mess even if the temptation mm -hmm. is to feel that um yeah. And so I think wow. this is a heads up of what part of yeah. Bali is going to be. Wow. All right. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Wow. That's cool. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh I think there's a little more. So that's specifically for Bali. I'm getting something with angels. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, this is cool. This is going to make your... When God pulls this into fruition, this is going to make your deliverance sessions even more fantastic. And they're already so yeah. powerful. What I saw is two, actually three angels coming up behind you. And they, the two of them picked you up underneath your arms and started like, like ascending you, like bringing you up higher, higher to the heavens. And I was asking God, what is this about? And there was a third angel behind you as well, but he was um sort of guiding the other two. And I asked yeah. God, what is this about? And God said, what he's going to do is sharpen your sight for the angelic. And mm -hmm. what this means is that in those, you know how when you describe in your deliverance, you cast out the demons and then yeah. you have to like purposefully tell the person to invite the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, um, when you cast them out, uh, at, cast the demons out afterwards, God's going to have you directly call specific angels in and you're going to get even better at that. And the angels would be there whether you called it out or not, but yeah. for the person that's with you and, and yeah. receiving this, oh my goodness, how powerful is that to know? Yeah. Wow. This is exactly yeah. the angel that replaced the demons. Yeah. Um, that's yes. So that's, that's coming your way. God's going to heighten your, yeah. your sight. Wow. That's amazing. Thank you so much for that. You're very that's welcome. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I think I have to pause again. I'm getting really nauseous again. Okay. Um, After prophesying over Phoenix, he needed to excuse himself again. And I realized, I don't think this podcast episode is over yet. I thought we were closing up, but in truth, we were just getting started. Hang around for part two. <laughs>